Welcome to episode 107 of Star Wars and Scotch. It's Kevin, and I'm joined as always by my buddy Tim. How are you this morning? I'm good, Kevin. Doing great. This was a. Uh, it's it's been a good week so far. It's been busy. It has, but it's been it a has. good week. We've had some nice weather. Oh, the weather's only gonna get better for the rest oh, the of the week. Tomorrow's gonna be fantastic. Bonfires. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, um. Uh, oh, your wife just texted me. Oh, oh, okay. That's good. It's about the the thing with the guy from the gym, her gym, that thing. He, oh. You're smiling. You know what I'm talking about, <laughs> Kevin. But you know, you, Kevin, you have to understand that when you say that out of context, the people that are listening are just like, <laughs> oh, your oh, your wife just texted me. It's about the guy with the thing and the and the, like. Kevin, you just made it sound like my wife is being very promiscuous. I just want no, you to no, play. it's business. She's trying to help us with business, and she made this connection at the gym. And Tim and I talked about it, and then she Thank just you. texted me, asked another thing. So I was telling, I came, uh, you know me, if something flashes in front of my face, I got to talk about it out loud. Anyway, oh my god. Uh, speaking of, uh, we hope you're uh, getting your delicious Kings Ghost coffee. Everything for the holidays dropped yesterday. Well, not the twelve days of Kings Ghost, but. Everything for the holidays dropped yesterday. If you did not get your cocoa and you hear me say this, chances are you might not get the cocoa. So get the cocoa as soon as you can because I am in love with the cocoa. I got it for the low. I probably shouldn't say that either. Um, But uh, (laughs) he put it on the website this time, Tim. I'm very proud. Um, But kingscoastcoffee.com, holiday roast is out. Uh, the cocoa is out. We do have some surprises coming with 12 Days of Kings Coast and whatnot, but um, new merch is out as well on the Kings Coast store. Uh, so thank you for uh, uh, all of those that purchased yesterday. So make sure you do that um, as as well. Um, and Our website but, is so festive as well. Like holy crap! I was getting snow. a lot of a lot of compliments Little yesterday snow. from chat about the website. They love the snow. They thought the lights were great. It was yep. really cute. So shout out to Pete for crushing it. All right. We had a physical line at the cafe yesterday for Coco. What is this? This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's this is the first time. Well, not the first release we've had where there's a physical line, but the first time for Coco we've had a physical line. That's so uh, cool. So it's, it's pretty cool. So thank you. Kingscoastcoffee.com uh, for all of your coffee, holiday, and hot cocoa needs. I love the Grogu mug. You know me, Kevin. I, I love, I just love big coffee mugs. It's just, it's a silly thing, but it makes me happy, so. I love coffee mugs too. My uh, my aunt for my birthday got me a "May the Forties Be With You" mug. Oh, which, that's nice. Yeah, I still don't know how I feel about it, so we'll see. It should have been or like the, a forty. It should have been like a forty ounce like pint, and then you could just always drink your forties away. The forties is yeah, like an oldie. Forties away, yeah. Uh, the gimmicky merch stuff that'd be great. You we, should. We should start an Etsy store. You want to start an Etsy store? We'll just do like just dad joke stuff. We could do that. Cheesy, cheesy Star Wars dad jokes merch. That could be the brand. Cheesy Star Wars dads. Oh, cheesy Star Wars dot com. Mm-hmm. Is it Paul's that taken? If, I, I wonder if people would think that that would be um, cheese that was like all <laughs> Big Star cheese. Wars themed. You know, so it's just like, oh, we have we've got the Mustafarian uh, Munster cheese. One of my favorite ska bands back in the day had an album called Cheeses of Na- Nazareth. Oh, and the I don't front, think... the front of it was just various cheeses that came from the Middle East. Yeah, I think that's a really cool idea. I think we're onto <laughs> something here. Oh, oh like a, we could do a blue milk cheese, like a Millennium Falcon shaped like Gouda or something like that. Yeah, like... we could call it the Kessel Run. <sighs> this is a really good idea. We should not I'm be talking you, about Kevin, this. We can start a Star Wars cheese company. I can't even it... eat it. It'll make me explode. But I, would I can't... love it. If it's sheep or goat, I'm I'm down. I the cows, unfortunately, I also won't be able to enjoy it. So okay, uh, so here we go. So it's pl- it's nothing but plant based cheese, <laughs> all Star Wars themed. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! You know how people hate getting they hate getting uh the fruit the the what's the the holiday loaf edible arrangements not edible arrangements. I'm talking what's the what's the the holiday bread that people hate to get fruit cake. Oh. Oh Perfect. yeah, Ugh. is that no. what I'm talking? Yeah, so yeah. like that would be the same thing, or like you know, like a Pepperidge, oh, you know, Pepperidge Farms, you know, meat and cheese. Yeah, you know, you know, like it, oh, you got us our annual Star Wars plant-based cheese for Christmas. Thanks, Uncle Kevin. 
you know, or a box of uh, Entenmann's donuts where you only eat two and then they just sit there and get really hard and stale. And then three oh. weeks from then you go to bite one. You're like, oh, I remember these. These were just like, oh, it's like a rock. <laughs> yeah, like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm digging the Star Wars cheese uh, uh, company. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, All right, guys, we'll it. get to you. We'll cool. get back to you on the Star Wars cheese venture. Cheesy Star Wars. Uh, and or. A second to yeah. last episode. Yeah. Lots of groundwork being laid for what's going to be in the finale. Oh, 100 percent. But it wasn't bad. I felt Good the tension episode. I really felt the tension. Um, uh, uh, we got a little insight into Karn. He met with his old well, his old sergeant contacted him on the comm. He's working in some smithing thing on on the planet Morlana. And uh I want to know what's happening there because it seems like Karn now is going to go back to Morlana. He just stole money from his mother's uh, jewelry box. No, okay. What do you got? Okay, all right. So, so I think we we skipped over the the biggest piece of all is is that Marva's dead. Oh, I was going to get to that. I oh, want to talk about yeah, Karn first. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, but like that. But so that that's a big part of it. So like you're talking about a piece of. So he gets he gets a, a call from Marlana one. It's the sergeant and sergeant is saying like and like Andor's mom died. Everybody knows that Andor's mom being dead is huge because he everyone knows that he's going to go like she was really important to him right so everyone knows that he's going to go back to Ferrix he's going to go back there and mm -hmm. everyone's getting ready for the return of Cassian and so we're going to we're going to meet up with the ISB the ISB is going to be there uh what's his face with his crazy mom he's going to show up because he mm -hmm. still feels like he needs to redeem himself and then Cassian's going to show up and so it's going to be this like this trifecta Vel of, sounds like she's going too Oh yeah, so oh, that's right. Val's gonna go too because she knows that he because they need to clean up the loose end that is Cassian, right? Every, everyone's gonna be like, a, uh, "Hey, we need this guy." No, I need this guy. I need him more. And so it's just gonna be like this power struggle on who wants to kill Cassian more. I uh, complete side note and didn't really have too much to do with the episode, but it was just Luthen getting away from the Empire was one of the most smoothest most ridiculous things i've ever seen in star wars he just owned them like at first i was like oh my god they're gonna board a ship they're gonna find the secret stuff and then i'm like no he has to get away because just the way this is all playing out he seems like the one that's connecting all the dots of rebellion how's he mm -hmm. getting out of a tractor beam of all things mm -hmm. you don't get yeah. out of a tractor beam he does yeah luthan luthan's fondor is essentially james bond's aston martin <laughs> yes it's, it's, it's exactly it's the, it's the aston martin of star wars because it does everything. I mean, like it's got the it's got the spike traps and smoke fog out the back, right? You know, like so instead of dropping spikes on the ground for tires to explode, he just essentially releases a bunch of just metal out the back, and mm -hmm. it destroys a tractor beam, which is so smart. It's so mm -hmm. smart. The like a tractor beam, all it does is just pull things towards it, right? Well, what happens when you release a bunch of little fragments of metal, and they get pulled at whatever the velocity is of the tractor beam and its strength? <laughs> you just got a big old grenade. Just all this shrapnel just comes ripping through the ship. So smart. Never yeah. thought of it that way. So like being like, so seeing <clears throat> a tractor beam getting defeated in Star Wars never happens. Tractor beams, as soon as a tractor beam comes into play, it's like, oh shit, this is over. It's like that in Star Wars. It's like that in Star Trek. Any like sci-fi show or movie that has a tractor beam involved, it's always bad news. There's, there's, it's always difficult to get away from it. And then he mopped up those TIE fighters like they were when he nothing. Did the, when he did the barrel roll with the laser beams, it was so uh -huh. awesome. <laughs> like it was nothing. I was like, all right, the TIE fighters will get. Nope, they won't. No, nope, yeah, that just, was easy. Just, just spins to win on the on the, uh, the the TIE fighters. So that was really cool. Yeah, that, that entire scene, they needed some type of action scene for us to go, oh, that was so was cool. Because it, it was really, it was a slow paced episode. Does it drive home how crappy of a ship the Millennium Falcon is? Because that's what I, that was my takeaway. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's, but that's what it is. The Millennium Falcon wasn't designed to be the Fondor. It was designed to be a, 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 a transport ship, you know? And so like, that's the craziest thing. If anything, it shows you how awesome Millennium Falcon is because it's able to like, it's able to hide from, from Star Destroyers and stuff. And, and they don't have, they don't have all the crazy, you know, tools and weaponry that, that the Fondor has, that Luthen has access to. So that was really cool. I really, really loved going back and, and, and um, seeing the, the level of stress and anxiety that, that's in the rebellion right now. Mm -hmm. um, because like that, that whole, that whole like conversational piece with Luthen was, was, that was stressful. I didn't know what was going to happen there. Yeah. Um, so this what's that guy's Ar Ar arto arlo i can't remember his name the other rebel that we haven't met 
that's in the oh Krieger. This all Krieger. So mm-hmm. Krieger is basically the lamb to the slaughter at this point because he he is yeah he's a scapegoat. This is this is what we meant when we said we want to see the dirty side of the rebellion and the things they had to do to make things happen. So he's willing. It's essentially if, if just to reiterate, he's willing to sacrifice Krieger Krieger's thirty men to make sure that his informant in the ISB is not found out. Because if they can't, if Krieger doesn't show up or there's some sort of counteroffensive or something along those lines, they will know that they have a mole and the ISB will shut down and flush out the mole. And obviously that's not what this guy wanted. That was the last episode we saw with him arguing in this one. It comes down to how dirty, like that's basically what Luthen's saying to saw how dirty are you willing to get at this point? Because you can go tell him, yeah. you know, but well- I like that whole thing of him having to essentially put a gun to his head to get him to listen. I thought it was funny that he tried to th- uh, basically say like two tubes was uh, tubes? His yeah, tubes is like, no, 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 it's not me. There's no way it could be me. <laughs> but, he, but he knows, but he knows he's so paranoid that he could, he was probably going to kill him. Cause right. he would, be, he would believe anybody. He's just like, who is it? Who is it? Tell me, you know, and he's just like, Oh, I'll just, he, he was looking for a reason to go off. Yeah. So, I am, I am this last episode, obviously seemed like saw agreed that he wasn't going to tell Krieger, which means yeah. Krieger's team is going to get, I don't think we're going to see it. I think we'll just hear I don't about think so. it. Yeah, I agree. I think they've been using, they just been using that to really set the tone of like what's going on and using that. But I, I don't think Krieger's going to be, be an actual thing. I, I they, don't know because, because they were during the interrogation of, of Dax. Dax. Bix. Bix. Uh, so many names. Um, when, when Bix was back in the interrogation room, she also didn't have much of a presence in this episode other than seeing how fucked up she is. Oh, oh my she's God, destroyed. She looks terrible. Like she's on the cusp of death. Um, the thing too, is they showed Krieger's image in that. They did. He did not scene. look familiar to me at all. I couldn't put a face to that. Uh, I, I have I a feeling sure. he'll be like comics books. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why they showed him to us. Yeah, so some piece it of all... the rebellion. But I'm really what yeah. I'm curious of though is like, are they are they gonna go through with this of sacrificing Krieger or is there gonna be some type of uh response that you think is just gonna it, it's gonna be one of those things where you just hear about it, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll hear that, you know, they got annihilated or something like that. I think Bix still had enough sense in her to be like, Yeah, that's the man I introduced Cassie Nandor to. You think she's gonna oh oh, maybe that's why she was crying. Because she knew yeah. that she was just going to say, yeah, and she's going to die. I wonder if she just accepted the fact that she was going to die regardless. I mean, when you get to that point and you're a prisoner of war, essentially, I think that's where your head that's goes. That's the thing is, like, he's like, tell me the truth or I'm going to call the doctor. And he, she knows that if the doctor comes and she's dead. But if she gives him all the information at the end of the day, they're not going to let her go. So she's dead anyways. Right. So, so she may as well, as well just... help Cassie out a little bit more. Yep. And and Luthen because she knows mm-hmm. what Luthen's doing. Um, right. So actually, she doesn't know. She thinks he's just a traitor. She knows right. She? she 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 knows that Luthen is a, a seller of of goods, and that's it. Um, the scene with Vel and Luthen's assistant was tense. Very tense. She is. I I don't know how to feel about the assistant. She reminds me of an android to a certain degree. She's got this. She she holds true to protocol. She doesn't she, break it. She has. Rules. She looks like the girl from the original Blade Runner. That's why you're getting that vibe. The android. Oh, you're right. <clears throat> she acts like it too, though, doesn't she? Doesn't she have like, little, she's android very systemic. appearance to her? She's just very like, she's very binary in the sense of she's just like, this is how it is, and there's no breaking of it. You know, there's no. It just I don't feel the emotion there. It's just very on and off for her. Um, you want to hear the worst Star Wars theory in the world about her? The worst. Who people sure. are speculating that she could be? Oh, this is, is she going to? Is she going to? Is she going to be the girl from Dathomir and Fall in Order? No, she's okay. nobody. Trust me, she's okay. just Luthen's assistant. That's what but I thought. But there are people on the internet saying that she's Princess Leia in disguise. Oh, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Who believes that? I have no idea. <laughs> no clue. She's I read that and I was she's like, "She's a junior senator what? right now." Why? Does we get no, no? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, she's still working for Alderaan. Yeah, she's a junior senator at this point, right? Because she's like, at that point, how many <clears throat> years off from from Episode Four are we? 
five-ish. Five-ish? Yeah. So she's, yeah. So she's not, so she's what, 11 or 12, yeah. right? Because she's supposed to be 16. So, so yeah, but her father's training her to become a senator. Essentially, yeah, right. So point. she's, yeah, she's leading, she's, she's learning under her dad. Um, she has to have a fit. She has to have this, this outward appearance. Is she a part of the rebellion? Yeah, of course. Most definitely. She would just, we just saw what she went through with Obi-Wan. Yeah. Of course dad. She's a rebel and her dad's a rebel, but come on guys. Really? It doesn't even look like her. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I Star thought it was Wars the worst theory. Is wild dude. You think we could see Krieger in fallen order? Krieger in fallen order. Um, I feel like they could, showed him for a reason. That's the only reason could. I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean you're right. They, they we got a full look at him. I, he's going to yeah. show up somewhere. There's going to be Unless, tie-ins. I mean, when when, when is Fallen Order supposed to drop? I've been so disconnected from summer next uh, year. No, it's a you know, Survivor Kobe? Jedi Survivor. I, it did get pushed to next year. Let's see. Jedi Survivor release date is spring. Do we not have one yet? We don't have one yet. Do we? <clears throat> Might have just said 2023. So, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like, it's March. March 2023. So, uh, that's where we're at right now. So, we, yeah, there's a lot of time between between now and March where we could get some interesting tie-ins. You know, I mean, like, we don't know how long this story has been in development. We don't know how long uh, Respawn has been been working on the storyline for Survivor. So, I mean, like, they could have been working on Survivor and Andor and Obi-Wan in tandem. And mm-hmm. they could be pulling off of each other to make sure that these stories, you know, they kind of coincide with each other or at least pull from each other. This is why Lucas has control over storytelling at the end of the oh, day, because they definitely. want everything to link back to Any it. Cohesion. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah, that was yeah. the problem with that was the problem with the expanding universe is that everybody had the the freedom to do whatever they wanted. So we had these disjointed stories that when you lay them out, it's not a linear story it is a fragmented jigsaw puzzle yeah and so it's very very difficult to try to figure out from start to finish how do you explain the story and now we are getting again we're getting this beautiful timeline where you can start from one point and go all the way to the end and there you go you get a full story and you can play video games comics read books watch tv shows and movies and you you have a beautiful experience and i can't wait to try that i can't wait to like try to do it i'm sure at some point i'll be old and and bored. I mean, like, I want to, I want to experience Star Wars from the beginning. Computer boot up Star Wars Protocol One. Because at, at this point, I'm going to be like 80 years old, and we're going to be very far into the future, Kevin, uh, mm-hmm. and a holodeck and everything. And that's and that's how we do it. Yeah, we'll have had our full Star Wars LARP experience exactly by then. Yeah, in a place that emerging. isn't Disney World. Not the right they're going with that. Holy Did you shit, hear about what a nightmare, Kevin? Galactic it's Star Cruiser. Bad. Twenty five percent occupancy is where they're at right now. Just kind of throwing that out there for you. You almost ready for that discount when we go in the Wednesday in like May for no reason, dude. I can't wait for Bogo on Black Friday. (laughs) It's buy one get one free room. I okay. Segue from Andor. We'll go back to it in a second. I was overjoyed when I saw the quarterly report for Disney, and I saw it is bad. That they had that after this asshole's boasting and being like, oh, the profit and look what I did. And I was like, motherfucker, you were living off vacations from people that had to delay them for five months during COVID. And now it finally caught up to you. And then Disney Plus. Yeah, they're doing everything with Disney Plus. You know what they're not doing? Getting new users to sign up for Disney Plus. They got mm-hmm. us. We, you have my subscription. I'm not going anywhere. My mm-hmm. kids watch it. I watch it. My wife watches it with me. Um, so it all caught up and now he's like hiring freeze. This is the other thing and all of his bullshit. And they're raising prices again on park tickets again. Yeah, second yeah. time in a year. Did you, did, did you see what they're doing with the tickets on the one day tickets? They're, they're, they're segmenting prices now. And so, um, there will be tiers as far as parks go. So for a one day ticket, the cheapest ticket will be animal kingdom. And then the second cheap, or the, and then the, the one up from that will be Epcot. And then mm-hmm. the next one will be Hollywood Studios. And then the most expensive one will, for a one day ticket will be Magic Kingdom. And so like they will be broken up into price points. And then what was the other thing they were doing? Oh, they're, they're killing off the annual pass uh, for Florida as well. So that's gone. Mm-hmm. You can't get that anymore. 
uh what was some other crazy shit that amy was telling about amy amy's been looking at it because we were trying to like find like a we were our, our annual passes were getting ready to finish and we were trying to find like a holiday like one last hurrah for disney for a bit and it's just it's ridiculous you just you can't mm-hmm. it's 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 just too much right now so it's not yeah, worth it dude. Just, it's just it's, it's, it's kind of frustrating because like for the longest time and you can attest this disney was like the weekend thing it was kind of like a fun way Always. to like reset the weekend it was like man we had a rough week you want to go to disney and it was like, yeah, let's go to Disney. And like, we just do Disney for two days and then go home. And like now the thought of doing that is like so foreign. It's, it's wild. I said, I said, there's the, you, me, Ben, we spent thousands of dollars, Mindy. We spent thousands of dollars every year going to Disney, like weekend getaways and things like that. And we did that four or five times a year just to yeah. get away. Cause it was right here. We don't do that anymore. I haven't been to Di- I, Disney since I think May was the last time I was there. And I mm-hmm. might go in April for my daughter's birthday because she's obsessed with princesses. But I'm not going back. Yeah. I just Universal, dude, it was it was I called them because my in-laws wanted to come to, to Universal with us. So I called them mm-hmm. to try and get a room. And they're like, well, it's six hundred dollars a night right now. I was like, whoa, that's like more than I paid. And I have a kid suite. Mm-hmm. And said, oh, you have a kid suite. Do you want to just tack them on? I said, well, there's no room in the room. They're like, we can give you a kid suite with an extra bedroom. I'm like, at what cost? <laughs> they go at no extra cost. I was like, what? Mm, what? <laughs> oh, so, so I have a three bedroom suite. You. I have a three bedroom suite for what I paid for this regular ass kid suite. Yeah. Um, and they actually, they were like, oh, there's also a deal on park passes now. So we're going to reduce, we're going to return your park passes and rebuy them. So you get BOGO on those. And then we'll get the park passes for your in-laws. It came out to $116 more than I had paid with an extra bedroom and two park passes for two days. Holy God. What? (laughs) Don't tell me a universal is not getting aggressive in the market to get people (sighs) away from them. So that's the difference. And Disney is, is they're like, everyone's like, it's time to to renege on your Marvel deal and build us the park that we want here. (laughs) Cause that's probably the only thing that's going to get us to like go back semi consistently um That's but yeah I'm, I'm i want to see the data on on floridians and californians who let their passes lapse stop going and what mm-hmm. that looks like because i have a feeling in about a year or two that that is going to be damning for them yeah yeah i mean and disney plus is just another thing i mean like how many how much money do they lose they're billions 1.5 billion dollars in a quarter in a quarter in a three in a month quarter. span there's a, a three a month span they lost one and a half billion dollars and analysts are saying that the the because they said they had their most profitable quarter prior analysts are saying that they moved things around to put the facade of profitability up above what it was not in a in a legal way in a very legal way right to take the hit the following quarter to keep oh, bob from getting ousted during the board meeting you know it's also crazy you know who isn't taking a pay cut who that guy Oh no, no, he won't. JPEG's Hiring not gonna freeze. take a, he's not gonna take a, a pay cut. He got a bonus. Yeah. And he got a three year addition to his sign on. I don't I think he'll I think he's gonna quit. So they signed him back on to come back and then they added an extra three years to his contract. So it's like he's in there for four years and he has yes, he has increased profits across the board but at the same time he's losing money hand over fist it's just like it's crazy he's losing money in customers that's the other issue like the money is translating to people not being disney people anymore that is what the board is worried about is your when you have your hedge fund investors saying like you're ruining the magic these are the scummiest people on the the planet who don't give a shit about the magic and they're complaining about the magic and they're saying you're ruining the magic and that's why it is like it, it was it was sucked out of that place come tw- like the end of 2019 is when that like it just <clears throat> went off with Mary Poppin into the wind. And I was I was I was saying like the I told Danielle, I was like they have Marvel, they have Star Wars and they're doing right by them. But they could do so much more. Yes. Especially in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said now the ship sailed on them being able to get D.C. because Warner Brothers Discovery is about to like juice into like they did not hire james gunn for no reason they are about mm-hmm. to like put that into fifth gear and go balls james gunn tweeted monday that they were having their 10-year plan meeting this week what's gonna stop ex- them? exactly what marvel did what's gonna stop them from turning the superhero island in adventure studio uh, islands of adventure into a dc themed world so supposedly in 2028 well here's the problem is Right now, Six Flags has the Warner Brothers contract. 
Oh, I see. For they, theme they, parks. But they also have other Warner Brother IPs at Universal Studios. They have right. they have Harry Potter. Harry Potter. And they're going to continue expanding Harry Potter into the new park that they're building. That's not even close to the original property. It's on the like in another part of Orlando. Inside baseball. This is partially NDA, but I can say the part that's not. I had a call with Universal REGCX. Yes, you can get excited if you're listening to this. Um, and um, I was talking to their team and we were talking about doing, you know, joint marketing and some things like that. They were telling me that each individual IP is its own deal. It has nothing to do with the parent company. Oh, I didn't know so that. I didn't either. So Minions is its own deal. Uh, Harry Potter is its own deal. Jurassic oh, Park is its own so deal. smart. So whenever they have to go and get like if they want to do, let's say theoretically, Tim was going to go to Universal. Let's say theoretically GCX was going to do something at Universal and we wanted mm -hmm. Tim to tweet about it from Hogwarts. Right. Yeah. We would actually have to get permission from Wizarding World. Yeah. To have Tim tweet. It has nothing to do with the right. Universal deal That's um, so and dope, in an though. official capacity. Obviously, Tim, you can take a picture of Hogwarts and no one's going to say you, shit. Kevin. That'd be really awkward if they were like, no tweets from you, Tim. <laughs> Everyone else. Fine. <laughs> so essentially they own each individual IP. So when the deal is up, which it's supposedly I've heard everything from it's a gentleman's agreement at this point to 2028. Mm -hmm. They're getting rid of it. Like after islands of or, uh, epic universe opens. Yeah. Um. So I could totally see a DC deal. Like just whoop, just turn the Spider-Man into Batman. Dr. Dude. Doom's free fall becomes Superman's it, free. It's an you know? awkward, it's an awkward thing to have Marvel at universal studios. And then you've got Disney just like hawking all the other stuff over there. So it's just with like, no Marvel yeah, except guardians then, of the galaxy. Right. But then you go to like, you go to Disney Springs and like they have all these Marvel stores. They're selling all the Spider-Man and Hulk. stuff. So like, but that's also at universal studios. It's kind of strange. Yep. So yeah, it'd be really interesting. Yeah, and Disney can only use MCU property. Universal owns the comic book. Yeah, the comic rights books and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's 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 a mess. It's a mess. Anyway, back to Andor because there's a few other things I want to talk about. So Cassian is out. He's back on crappy beach vacation planet. Yeah, he went to Space Florida again, which I really thought was interesting. And I thought he was banging that alien that was in the in the bed. But I think, he snuck, I, think, I think he snuck into that room because then I realized that alien was also cuddling with somebody else. So then I was like, was Man, is that alien. a wild threesome or did he sneak into that room? So I'm going to go in my head, Cassie bang both those people and then got the money box and left. But I don't think that's really what happened. I think he snuck into that room, got it and left. I mean, they left it up to the imagination. So if that's how you it want really to conceive did, but like, uh, that's totally. how I saw it. I was just like, man, Cassie got it like one last little uh -oh, with some aliens and then. Peace out. You, per you perceive the shit out of that, but you go for it. I think I just I, I don't know. He kind of has that same demeanor as like Han or Lando He's like, hey, you got some tentacles. Like, let me see what those things can do. You know, I mean, Lando's banging droid. So, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> got the shiny <laughs> adapter for you. So he's obviously going to come back now that he found out. Uh, his his mother Marvin's yeah, gone. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, B two is breaking my damn heart. Dude. Oh my god! I've never seen a robot have a panic attack before, but that was hard. It was really he didn't want rough. To be, he didn't want to be alone. He didn't it want was to be very alone. Sad. He just I want my Marva back, and it's just like okay, little guy. I just I'll hold you. They sad. do that with droids. They do that with robots all the time. I feel I feel for for B. I feel, uh, you know uh, I mean hell even. BD1, you know, you feel for him. I mean, Dio, you feel for him. I mean, just like they do. Dio really was abused. Dio was beat to shit. He was you know? abused. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I really like B. I hope I hope we get to see him throughout the rest of the season. I would hate for for us to lose him next week. I'd love to see Cassie and take him with him when he leaves. Yeah, I mean, he needs a little droid companion. All of our favorite heroes have a droid companion. And B seems to be that. He just need to get from point A to point B. If he gets a battery update upgrade. Then like that's his problem because he can't like that's 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 the whole reason why he didn't want to leave home. He's I'm like, charging. I'm, I'm charging because his bat like he can't hold a, a charge at all. Those capacitors don't work for him anymore. So he's literally he has to live in his charging bay. So I would hope like Cassian gets to upgrade him so he can travel around with him next season. It's like that's like my old laptop right there. Yeah, right. You just like oh, I forgot the power adapter. So damn. Twenty five minutes off, off the AC <laughs> adapter. Poor guy. The boot up takes um, twenty minutes. Yeah, I know. Poor little guy. But yeah, I hope he takes him with him. Uh, the dynamic of how many people are watching that house was incredible. Oh, my because God. Because we had what's her face who now works at this coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And then her her patron is working with the Empire in the he's coffee the, shop. He's the ISB agent that's hanging out. Does she know? No, she has no fucking clue yet. 
I don't and think he so. doesn't know. I don't think so. That's the whole thing where I think next week it's going to be like a, hey, hey, wait a second. It's going to be that Spider-Man meme where they're just like, like or, uh, or he's like, <laughs> you know, it's going <laughs> to be that. It's going to be a Leonardo DiCaprio on the, on the, the sofa. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of people looking for Cassian at the same time. And they're all going to, I think there's going to be like this huge shootout between them all. And I think the right. fair, I think the, 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 I, how do you call people from Ferrex? The, the Ferex, the, the Ferrakian, the Ferrakian people, the, the, fa- the Ferrakian knights, the, the Ferex, Ferexans, <laughs> whoever those, I, the people from Ferrex, I think they're going to, they're going to stand behind Cassian because they protect their own. They, even though Cassian, you know, was the, the troublemaker and everything else, Marva was loved by the community. You can tell, you, they even said it, you know, she was, she was held high within this, within the, the group. So she, she's getting, you know, the highest honors for her burial. I love the whole thing where they, they make her a part of, or they make their dead a part of the wall. I thought that was really, or a part of a wall. They, they, turn, their, they turn their ashes uh, into brick and they mix it with mortar and, and It's dirt. a blue collar society, so it makes sense but like, for... It's just like, I don't know, that was kind of a, that's a kind of a beautiful send off in my mind of just like, like you are always a part of, of, of this community now. You are, you are a... Um, a pivotal role to keeping the walls alive, you know, keeping these buildings up. And like, that's, that's so cool that like, t- you, you will, you will, y- your remains will live, will live on in, in a part of the community. So I thought that was really cool. That was neat. Um, I'm trying to find the lists of cast. Cause I wanted to talk about, um, I, I keep, I keep on forgetting that Saw Gerrera is a part of this. So every time he pops up, it's like, damn, it's just, oh, it's so good. And if just, it was me, it was, what would yeah. you do then? <laughs> it was just, it's, it's just, he's so much fun. I just, I really hope that we get to keep him going into next season as well. We didn't get to see Andy Circus. We have no idea if he's Kino's gone, alive or dead. Shut up, Kevin. Yeah. I think he's still there on the prison. I think he's in the prison complex and he's doing, and he's back on program. And maybe we'll see him next season. You know, maybe. If you want to see him again, you're going to go on and go watch the sequel trilogy. Oh, <clears throat> he's dead, Tim. No, oh, are you sure? Yeah, because either he died from drowning or he stayed and got killed when all the Imperial officers came out. What if he showed up next episode? I mean, what if? What if, dude? Could I be. really like him, Kevin. Like that was such a good character, and I don't like I don't like it when they use like fun, famous actors that I adore, and then they kill them off in three episodes. Like that. ah, fuck. Some people just want to be in Star Wars. That's the thing. That's true. Um, and he's probably one of them. You know, there's the funny story of Daniel Craig when they were filming yeah. uh, The Force Awakens and he was filming Bond across the street and he was like, can I be in the movie? And he's not even credited. They didn't pay him. But that is, he is the stormtrooper in the scene where Ray is, is uh, uh, mind controlling the stormtroopers. <laughs> you will, he will release my restraints and let me go. <laughs> Yeah, because some people just love it and they want to be a part of it and they want to be in it and they don't care about the money. And I think that was one of those instances where Andy was like, "Oh, yeah, I'll come back. I'm, the one I'm kid, down." The one kid from Game of Thrones is in that too. Um, he's in the control room in the ex in the um, in the launch bay when Finn and uh, Poe are running to get into the the Tie Fighter to fly away. The kid who plays um, Brom's uh, guide. Um, oh, um, a Podrick. He's he's in there in the control room. He's asking. He's asking about the Tie Fighter. He's like Tie Fighter. Blah, 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 what's your clearance number? <laughs> That's him. The Podrick scene where he loses his virginity is one of the best scenes in Those all are, of Game of Thrones. No, not Pod, not Podricks. The um the 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 kid who t- about the one eyed Raven who teaches uh the Stark kid. Oh, Jojen. Yes, that sounds Jojen right. Reed. Yeah, yeah. So he's in there. Anyways, the one with the sister great. and he yes. gets killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. That yeah, that's Jojen Reed. I thought it was Podrick we were talking about. No, as soon as you said Podrick's... Podrick and sex, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, because they they're like, like they didn't want right. you. They didn't want your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's he's got he's got the tools. Tell us everything. <laughs> um, Deidre wasn't really in this episode aside from the one scene, um, but I thought it was very important because she was like, let them have the funeral. We want them all boxed up. Uh, every episode, she appears smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter to me. It. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm interested to see, obviously she'll be back for season two, but yeah. she quickly went from like, who is this annoying Imperial ISB agent to what's she going to do next? I love she's, her. She's a great, she's playing guy. 40 chess. Mm-hmm. Um, what did so you, what, did, what did you think of, um, Mon's, uh, 
scene where she was in the in the uh in her house in the living room talking to her sister to her cousin i want to float another theory by you uh and this one is either gonna you're gonna be like maybe or it's gonna piss you off again um there is a theory that her husband doesn't know what she's doing and he's doing the same thing and he's being a dick to try and protect her and distance her from oh. his dealings Ooh, i like that <clears throat> so he's not loyal he's also gaining intel also working with other people probably with luthan and separately and they have no idea and he's just trying to protect her so he's Ooh. being an asshole to her so she's not all in his business as much as i don't think that's the case i love that because i think yeah, he's just a I dick I think he's just an asshole and he doesn't love her because we all, unless they've been trying to lead us off that trail with the whole like, oh, it's an arranged marriage and they don't really love each other and all this stuff. What if he does really love her? Yeah. Ooh, that's so good. Also, the daughter and this, um, the, the chant that they were doing or practicing that mantra. Is that, is that a tra- Chandrillan thing where they are, so it are, seems are they to readying be- themselves for marriage? Is that what all that was? So it seems like Chandrilla has these ancient customs that are very like, traditional arranged marriage things like that yeah um and it seems like the mon's generation kind of grew out of it to an extent but this new generation is apparently attaching themselves back to it because you know how that works in societal yeah, it's all situations cyclical. yeah so it seems like yes that she's in favor of an arranged marriage and you know the what was it called the i forget what the group was called and she's the one that sought out the teacher or whatever it was for mm-hmm. their little group um it had nothing to do with mon it had nothing to do with her father so um vel seemed a little bit worried too well because i think that arranged marriage with the gangster is going to happen i think his son and her she has no choice i i think that's what's going to happen yeah she has no choice so yeah because i mean she she definitely made it seem like this is my only way out to fix it or the empire is going to know and so again this episode was all about sacrifice this episode was about giving up things for the greater good that's when he was like for the greater good. And he was like, if that helps you sleep at night, sure. And he was like, then yeah. it's just war. And I'm like, yeah, it's just war. It's just what happens. It's just like, unfortunately, casualties of war is a real thing. And sacrifices are made. And so Mon has to make her own sacrifice. And her daughter is the sacrifice. The one thing that she truly loves and holds dearest to her heart, she's going to have to give up because she knows the rebellion's bigger. Yep. She understands that for her daughter to be happy, safe, and protected, She's going to have to give her up to a bat. Like to, she's going to have to do something bad to make sure that nothing bad happens, which is weird. It's really weird to do a double negative, but for this it works. And so she's going to have to make that sacrifice and it'll be, it'll be a very, very emotional thing for Mon. I'm cause it, it might be the last time she sees her daughter. We, um, we also had when, uh, um, Cassie and, and his buddy that broke out, uh, they had their separation and that was another pivotal thing. I thought it was really poignant when he said we need to double, we need to split up cause it'll double our odds cause people need to fi- find out what happened there. Um, again, he might be right. They might've been the only two that was able to get off the planet and, yeah. and now can tell the story. So I thought it was smart the way he said that as much as easy as it would have been to take Cassian's money and, you know, hide and, mm-hmm. but no, they know how terrible it was. And I think it also changed Cassian um that whole experience now he's probably bought in more to the rebellion instead of trying to lay low because apparently even laying low got him there yep so he's he's going to be a different person um at the in this next episode and come season two um so we had that and then uh was there anything else in this episode really oh the narki narkinians the narkinians those are cool totally reminded me of something like out of lord of the rings yeah, like the way they like, were talking, uh, or even so. yeah, they kind of had like an orc kind of like the one guy who had like the the sword hand, uh, mm-hmm. v- very orcish in that sense. Um, but I like the way they talked to each other. It was it was cool. It was neat. It was uh, just a fun little thing. I, I really, I really like how they leaned on the the props for this show again. Like mm-hmm. they did a lot of practical effects, practical sets. They re- they didn't use the volume. There's I think there was a couple scenes where they used the volume, like. So when they were climbing on the on the dirt, um, no, looked, Tony Gilroy said no volume. Wow, that looked very volume to me. Um, nope, so yeah, no so volume. if there was no volume at all, I think that was it was really really well done. Like all of these scenes have just been fantastic. The um, the alien life forms again, like when 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 Filoni made the made the decision to, to lean more into the old way of doing things, I really feel like that has just elevated star wars to just a whole nother level again well i don't want to say it's elevated to another level, but it's brought us back to what we expect and we're not leaning heavy on the cgi we're doing more practical stuff 
And that's one of the things that I helped, I, I think helped sell this show for me is that it just it felt a lot more real. It felt a lot more just nitty gritty and dark. A lot, a lot like how Rogue One felt. Rogue One felt the same way where I was like, man, I could see myself there. Like that felt like a real yeah. place to me. Like I could, I could see myself walking those streets. And so that was really, really cool. Um, man, I just, I, again, like this, this, it wasn't a big episode. It was a filler episode. You know, I've, I've been saying like, man, there really hasn't been like a down filler episode or like when you know it's a filler, it's still good. And this was still a slower one, but it, it, the underlying message for all of it was sacrifice. Like that's all they really harped on the entire time was like, hey, we all have to make these sacrifices. Bix is going to make a sacrifice. She's going to give up her life. She's going to die for the rebellion. She's going to yep. die for Cassian. Uh, uh, Marva died for Cassian. A lot of, a lot of people are going to die next episode. A lot of people have died already. And a lot of people are going to continue to die next episode. And it's going to, it's going to just continue to, to beat home at, at the end of this, 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 this theme that we're getting to that we've continued kind of placing on is, is sacrifices, them giving up all this stuff. So what is everyone next week going to be willing to sacrifice to get the thing that they want? What is the ISB going to sacrifice to get Cassian? You know, Luthen will not survive season two. Fuck, really? You think he's going to die? Oh, yeah. No, Luthen will be dead by the time all this Damn. is done. I really Mon like Mothma him. is going to get caught at some point in season two and have to, you know, leave and go do what, what we know she's going to do uh, in the future. So that'll be established as well. Um, uh, and then I don't think Vel and them will survive either. I think so cl- everyone so will be dead by the gonna, end of all this. We know we're going to get a cliffhanger. For yeah, Tony week. said a, a big cliffhanger. So, what do you? Th- wh- how do you see that cliffhanger going? I try to rack my brain to think of what it could be at this point, and I mm-hmm. really don't know because getting Cassian captured again doesn't make sense to me. No, he has we've to seen it too many times, lesson. right? Right. Yeah. So he has to escape, but how is he going to escape? Bix is probably going to end up dead in this episode, um, like you said. It, it's just it's how many people are going to die? What's the damage going to be? And how is Cassian going to get out? Is he going to take B two? I don't know what the big cliffhanger is. I think it's something out of our our purview, Tim. Honestly, I think Tony's got something up his sleeve that he hasn't played his hand yet. Um, so I'm really curious as to what that would be. Yeah, Paul put think of born cliffhangers, 007, things like that. Yep, yep, Those yep. are things old westerns. You want to reference what they've done because that's where they're drawing um, inspiration from. I actually saw a side by. I think I sent it to you, Tim. The side by side comparison of the 1961 yeah, uh, samurai movie with with uh, the scene from uh, Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. um with ahsoka which was amazing um so yeah i don't know do you have a prediction of what you think it'll be i don't i, re- I really i've been trying again i've been trying to figure out where we'll leave off and it, it could involve luthan to a certain degree i mean like the, the, he's very much so hellbent on on trying to clean up and make sure that he isn't like found out he's protecting his own skin he wants to make sure he's good um so yeah i mean like it could end with luthan dying at the end it could it like that could be our cliffhanger is like luthan dies is is it Ca- cassian's hand does cassian just be like does he blame him for everything he's like this is all your fault for starting all this and kills him like i don't i don't know i'm not really sure i mean like luthan is such an important asset to the rebellion but it's it's that part of the rebellion where it's like it's all gorilla you know like he, he saw saw is unhinged Saw is very much so he is he's that radical freedom fighter without anyone holding the leash. And that's the scary part. And Luthen is is encouraging that behavior. And you always end up getting these types of like radicalistic freedom fighters when it comes to any any type of war. I mean, you're always going to have these types of people. Um, The scary part is, is like we. We, we know how Saw continues on. So like we know he gets even crazier than where he is right now. And so is Luthen the, per, is, is Luthen the one with like that is, that is holding the leash. And so when Luthen dies, is that when Saw just understands that he, he doesn't have anyone to tell him what to do and he can just do his own thing? I, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm not really sure. I think there's, there's definitely something there with Luthen and Saw and, and Cassian. I, I think, I think those those three is, is what's going to set us up for the next season. So I would assume there's going to be some type of confrontation or some type of just something that happens between the three of them that really sets us off into the next one. Yeah. I think Luthen is safe for this season. I think next season will be his demise. He's so cool. Uh, I would, I would hate to lose him at the end of this one. I mean, like he just, nah, he does next season. He does the coolest shit, you know, he's, he's so neat. What a, what a cool person. I Don't get attached to that agent. ship. 
I don't think I that love ship's the Fondor, it dude. What a cool ship that thing is. What are they? What do they call? What, what's the classification? It starts with an H. The uh, the, uh, the 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 heart. Uh, Hassian, the, 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 I don't know. It starts with something. Anyways, it's such a cool ship. I love what it does. And like the way the wings can like retract in and like, so he pulled the wings in and then the lasers came out. It's just, it was cool. It was a spy car. You know, it was James Bond. It just, it felt right. It felt so good. I love it. Cause you, you, we've also never seen anything like that before. It, it kind of no. reminded me of like a, um, a Sith interceptor, like what the, uh, what the inquisitors use. Kind of had like that kind of vibe to it, but it's it's very very unique. Can't find the designation Halcyon? for it. Is it a Halcyon? No, that's a Star Cruiser. <laughs> yes, that's the that is the Star Cruiser. That's the Star Cruiser. <laughs> um, a bit a bit of news, nothing too crazy, but some some interesting stuff nonetheless. There's a three minute short with Grogu on Disney Plus, uh, made by and again, I'm not an anime person, so if I'm mispronouncing these things, I apologize ahead of time. Studio Ghibli, did I say that right? Tim? Sounds right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so Studio, Studio Ghibli, Ghibli. Uh, and uh, it's a three minute short. It's adorable. Uh, watch it with your kids. It's really cute. It's basically Grogu playing with these. Uh, they're called dust bunnies, but they're apparently from uh, Miyazaki's animated films. My neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away. The yeah. Susuwatari. Can I say you're that doing right? Okay. Yeah, you're doing okay. So uh, it's really, really cute. Your son is going to love it, Tim. Um, yeah, Spirited <laughs> Away is, is really good. So that's... Um... That's cool. Never, I honestly thought I thought this was a teaser when I saw the announcement for this. I was like, "Oh, this is a teaser for next Vision season." I didn't realize that it, might it was be. An actual. That's what I thought it was because I was like, "Oh, this is in the same vein as everything else we saw for Visions," because they leaned really heavy on anime. So I just thought this was a teaser, but it seems to be its own independent thing that just kind of popped up. So I was so if anything, cute. I wonder if this is like showcasing like, "Hey, we're gonna do more when Visions drops." So I, I don't know. The response of Visions was huge, so they are going to uh, delve deeper into that, which leads us to another piece of news. Uh, Filoni and Kathleen Kennedy met with the creators of The Ninth Jedi, which is one of the episodes from Visions. We've seen them expand Ronin. We have the novel. I have it right behind me, uh, The which is basically the first two chapters of what you see in the in the show. And then after that, it has its whole own story. And then they have a comic book now that's a precursor to what happens in the book and the show. So now uh, it seems that the ninth Jedi might get greenlit for an animated series, it's which perfect. would be awesome. It's and if you perfect. don't remember the ninth Jedi, yeah, go ahead, Tim, refresh their memories. It's just, it's, it's, it's a story about the star Wars universe in a time where the Jedi have forgotten. It's 200 years after the Skywalker saga. And so the Jedi haven't been heard of in a long time. The Sith aren't a thing. The idea of lightsabers and like all of these arts and crafts are gone, completely gone. And so you have these people that are trying to rebuild the old ways. And it's just like, man, this is the perfect way to tell a Star Wars story because you have a clean slate, just like the High Republic, right? It's in a period that nobody knows anything about. We know it can exist. That time frame works. But it's so fresh. It's so it's new. It's it, you can do whatever you want with it. And this is so far enough away, like lineage wise. Uh, if you if you go from just like generation to generation, we're dealing we're dealing with uh, how many like what is that like ten generations almost uh, mm -hmm. like since since the Skywalker saga. So it's a long time for people to forget about all those things that happened because apparently like things were wiped out. And so I would love to know more about this time period because it seems so cool. And it had a very, um, it, it was also the art style and the way that it was done, but it was just, it, you know, feudal Japan. It had this like very, um, it, it just, it had this like just really cool feel to it where it's just like, it just, it made sense. It worked. I really liked it. So I'm really happy that they're, they're expanding it because out of all of the shows, Ronin was really good, but I think the ninth Jedi, as far as just like it working in the, the world in the in the Star Wars universe in like the proper timeline, I think that works. I know you like Ronin a lot, but Ronin I love is Ronin so, for different yeah, reasons. It's it's so awesome, but I don't think that'll work as a Star Wars story in the canonical set. I think I don't think a, like I don't think Ninth Jedi would be canon either. Why not? I think I think it'll just be like a Vision series or something. But like that. but but why? Because I don't think they'll want to commit to that right now. It's it's so far into the future, and it's if it's just an animated show, you don't have to hold true to anything. Literally but nothing. You could just slap the visions like a vision series on there, the same way they did with Ronin. You just want to call it a Star Wars story? Yeah. Look, look. 
No, no, no. I, I, I know because Ronin makes no sense. It has, it, it has like zombies and it has samurai and it like. Oh, you can't see that. It no, says I, I a visions it. novel. It says yeah. a visions novel on it. Right. And but, but like, it's because the way that I would assume because the way that it's set up, it does not fit in a Star Wars telling because it's right. It's like right after the fall of the empire. Like we have zombie stormtroopers. You know, it's just like, but like the ninth Jedi, I think because it's so far away, you can still put it in the proper timeline. That's just my take. I just love it. I thought it was just like the whole idea of trying to rebuild and relearn and, and bring forth the old ways and trying to do it in this new, in this new way is just so cool. It's just well done. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, I think I think they'll just stick to like keeping the visions and the visions world, if that makes sense. Hate it. I want visions. I want visions to be the playground and they find out what works. And then they're like, aha, this one stuck. So we're going to keep developing that one. And that's how I, I mean, like essentially what they've done um, is just like, how far are they going to go with it? That's that's where that's where my excitement is, is like, what are we going to get from visions? Are we going to get real true stories that will develop into shows and comic and like all that stuff? Or is it just going to be like these fun little like that was cute. Here you go. This almost like almost like what if i think that's the idea here. yeah but what i mean like yeah but i mean like we got to see some stuff from what if in like movies so that was right that and was they really might cool they might do the same yeah, thing that's, that's the only really other exciting. two that i would want to see extended would be the elder and la Pinocho. those were the other two i, I really want to see the bohemian rhapsody on tattooing bohemian tattooing whatever whatever I, that one was love tattooing it. I wanna, rhapsody i want to see more of that nothing but I, that hated that episode such a so terrible much. episode the one with the with the what was the uh, the ob ob was the one, he was like a little robot he was a little robot wanted to become a jedi t-o t-o-b-1 toby there you go toby uh mm-hmm. that was that was a cute one yeah it was cute i didn't say it was good i said it was cute speaking of things i didn't like i finished path of the seat and <laughs> yeah i'm really glad i didn't read it i'm really mad that i bought it just like wow what a t- t- I, i'm not i don't want to be mean about it i really don't no, it's tell, not no speak your truth kevin it's just it's boring it's boring and that's um, good to know people need to hear that it's boring and from your point of view so tell why was it boring it's 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 boring it, it, it there's nothing happens in the book and people are going to come back and people have already come back like oh the end i finished the end it feels like a shoehorned lore for something that happens in the other books um and it just doesn't feel good uh um so i my here's my biggest gripe is again what i said three weeks ago we had these stories they were great and we were figuring out you know all these new characters and stuff and then they take us back in the past and it was too soon and now that i finished this book it was too soon it was too soon. They're trying to establish backstories of people I don't even have full context on in the current, well, not current, but that era of whatever this may be. So it's just really, really not good. It, it, the story did not flow. It never had an up, to be honest. The end, yeah, I understand the person on Twitter that said like, oh, the end was pretty good. It felt shoehorned. It felt like, here's the backstory of this thing that you must know to move forward. And it's like, I didn't really need to know this because um, this existed i'm trying to do this spoiler free as best i can um so it was just it was a snooze fest and i couldn't wait for it to be over thank god it was only an eight hour book um so i'm not looking forward to the next book of phase two i have a feeling phase two is going to be very contrived uh and and this almost forced backstory that we didn't need yet uh and that'll make me angry until we get to phase three that's that's what it is that right there we did not need this yet i don't think i don't understand the disjointed like going back and forth like we had a a really really good story with like that with phase one and the the end of the last book was such a huge cliffhanger i know we talked about this last week so i feel i'm probably sound like a, a broken record but i don't understand why we couldn't have just continued that story why did why do we need more backfill on a time that isn't developed yet on it hasn't been flushed out completely and like this is a good time like where we find ourselves with with starlight beacon and where the jedi order and stuff this is this is their peak this is this is the highest point that that we will ever see the jedi at in this golden age and they decided to push us even farther back into like this like what are we are we gonna get to the renaissance of of 
the galaxy like, i don't know like how far back are we gonna go is it gonna be are we gonna get to analog stuff and it's gonna be our present time like i, I don't know it's just like it's kind of frustrating that we're 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 going so far I, that doesn't work because it's a long time ago in a galaxy far far away but are we gonna get back to like modern stuff where we feel like we were like oh i i connect with that it's like stuff that i use all the time it's, i don't know i just i don't see the point I don't see the point of, of going in the past in the higher public. I would have been fine with continuing the story of the higher public where we were. Mark Ian was interesting. The Jedi that we were meeting were interesting. You said it last week. You know, they're just interesting characters. People are cosplaying as them. They have interesting weapons, lightsabers, force powers, recognition of the force, the way they perceive it. All interesting. And then we just kind of wipe that away and go jump yeah. into the backstory of do the you, villain essentially it's 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 markion's backstory at the end of yeah. the day even though he's not in it yet so why don't we just finish markion's story like that's the whole Thank thing it's like why did we need a backfill and are they trying to are they trying to rush the connection between the old republic and the high republic like that's that's the other weird thing is it's just like it just feels so rushed like we had to get there and it's like did we like you had all of this stuff you've already laid out why do we need to go backwards yeah it it doesn't it doesn't feel right it doesn't make sense it feels very forced uh, this this might be I don't know whose decision this was, but it feels like a big flub in my opinion. Um, and I guess, you know, I guess if they would have said what the I like why they wanted to go this route, maybe that would help ease our minds. But they didn't even give us a reason as to why we needed to go back even further. There could be a bigger picture, and when I read all four, you know, primary books for the phase two, it could, yeah. it could reveal more, uh, and it could just be a bad you know version of what's to come. Could flesh it all out and make it better. But as it stands right now, in my opinion, after finishing Path of Deceit, the direction of Phase 2 was a mistake, in my opinion. Um, and the fact that these resources were allocated to this story, and uh, again, I didn't get High Repub or Old Republic stuff, makes me upset. So that's my opinion. You, I know people disagree with me. I've seen it. It's completely fine. That's my opinion. And I'm pretty amicable. Like, even if I don't like a Star Wars story, I can find the parts of it that made sense for why they made it. This I have I I have yet to too too soon is still my opinion. We didn't need this information yet. Yeah. And the like I That's said, sad. the plot twist, Tim, wasn't even like, oh my gosh. It was like, all right. So did you see it coming? Kind of. Yeah. That sucks. Like I, I, it was a possibility. That's the best way I can put it. Sounds it. like one of the bad. Well, like this sounds like probably the only bad piece of Star Wars literature that I think we've talked about. Other than it's the definitely books. the teen books are pretty rough, but I think overall, yeah. And then in these main High Republic books, this is by far the worst compared to other by Star far. Wars books. How do you feel? Other ones that you've read? Still, it's one of the worst. Bummer. Yeah, definitely one of the worst. Well, I mean, I don't want to be like. I don't want to be like, ah, phase two is, is fucked, but I mean, no, I'll, I'll see it through. I just, I, I, really the next hope, I really hope they, they kind of bring us back with the next one. Cause I, I don't, I don't want to read this one. Like I, I I'm just going to go just, off of what you said. I'm just going to ask you questions. Yeah. Do that. And there'll just, be, there are videos where people will break it down for you in like an hour on YouTube. Yeah, maybe I'll just do that. But I, I, I tell you, I literally listened to it for the first 10 minutes. And I'm like, I'm good. I turned it off. The I just didn't want to detailed information in this book is virtually useless there is nothing that like i would say re it wasn't like in shadows of the sith where i was like tim you have to get to the part where they go through the past with the sith and i was like it's so insignificant in the grand scheme of things but it was just a cool way to show the past of star wars and who this person was and luke experiencing it firsthand that i was upset there's nothing like that in this book nothing i could tell you the end of the book when we hit end on this and you'd be like oh what do you fucking do like it's just whatever at this point so um, pretty disappointed in Path of Deceit, but willing to see Phase Two all the way through to see if it makes a bigger um, connection to the to the broader story on that one. Last bit of news before Tim and I get out of here: it, unprecedented, but next week for Thanksgiving, which plays into what I've been saying, Tim. People are off and they want them to experience it. Uh -huh. So Andor's viewer ratings are very high, very high. People that are watching it are loving it, but not everybody's watching it. And we've gone over why and how and who. Um, and apparently Disney execs listen to our show because um, oh, they decided to <laughs> okay. make a decision Look based on what we were saying. Not really. Uh, but um, uh, I mean, I don't know. They might for all I know. So according to this press release, Disney is going to have the first two episodes of Andor airing on live television on ABC, FX and Freeform. 
Holy crap. This is nuts. Whoa. We are going backwards now. <laughs> I forget how many properties they own now because they own Fox. That means yep. they own FX and FX2 and like all of those FX. Freeform X-X's. used to be Freeform ABC used Family. To be ABC Family, which ABC has always been Disney. So ABC Family got turned into Freeform, which is going to be like the more edgier teen, like for teens. Um, what else do they have? And then they have NBA. What else? ESPN. What other? ESPN as well. Nuts. And but, Hulu. And Hulu. And well, Hulu, Disney Plus. Crazy. Hulu, Hulu will be streaming. You'll be able to stream the first two episodes of Andor on Hulu, and then they're going to try and push you to Disney Plus to watch the rest of it. Um, so the season finale is next Wednesday, and then I believe for Thanksgiving Day, the stuff will be on um, and available. I think that's the plan, if I'm not mistaken. But this is just it's a it's a crazy move. I think it's a great move, personally. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm I'm praising it. I think it's good to, to get people interested like this. Shows a bunch of things. One, even though they're confident in in what Andor is as a show, because mm-hmm. they know if you watch it, you'll want to watch more. And then two, the viewer numbers for Andor are down. That's we've known that for weeks. Three, it's it's a shameless move by Bob's team to try and get people to subscribe to Disney Plus. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. This is a great marketing tactic. I feel like giving people some content. HBO did it with House of the Dragon. You were able to watch the first episode of House of the Dragon completely free. You didn't need wow. an HBO Max subscription. Um, and they did that the week Rings of Power came out. Um, so it's That's a good move. Smart. <laughs> it's very smart. I give credit where credit is due. I, I And I don't think it's saying Andor is bad. I actually think they're saying Andor is really good, and that's why we want you to watch it. Um, which I have no problem with, but I think it feeds into what I said. People are home for Thanksgiving. They'll plow through Andor. They'll yeah. do it again during Christmas. They'll plow through it and they'll get Disney sub, uh, plus subscribers out of it. So um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting move, but it makes a lot of sense. And I'm, I hope they do it more often in the future. It also me shows too. me how many people are still watching network television. <laughs> Yeah, you thought. I mean, I thought there was a massive exodus from that, but you're right. Like they, they do need to figure out how to acquire new users, and maybe this is the aggressive way they go about doing it because they put it everywhere else. I mean, literally, you can't go anywhere without hearing or seeing a Disney Plus ad. It feels like. I mean, like it's all over Disney. Like it's all over Orlando. It's it's on TV all the time because I mean, like Disney has their fingers in a lot of the major broad, uh, a lot of the uh, the major networks. So it's it's impressive. It'll be very interesting to see like Star Wars all over the place. Like that's it's gonna be cool. Yep. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you so much for listening to episode 107 of Star Wars and Scotch. Make sure you, make sure you rate, review, subscribe. If you're a podcast person, leave comments. If you're a YouTube person, uh, and uh, anything that any interaction with the show helps us. So if you subscribe, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, and you can follow us for Star Wars and Scotch on Facebook, Star Wars Scotch on Twitter. You should follow Tim Darkness Four Two Nine. He's getting down with some Warzone this week, dropping mm-hmm. today. So uh, by the time you hear this, Tim will be live. So you can go straight to fb.gg slash darkness429 and go over there and watch Tim go pew pew in uh, Warzone uh, on the new map. Uh, and everything I do is uh, at raredrop.co. If you want to talk to me personally, kmagic101 on Instagram, Kevin X Vision on Twitter. But we will see you next week for the finale of Andor. You all have a good one, Timmy. May the force be with you. Da 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 da